invitation to, to actually present something that I'm very passionate about. Actually, this was going to be a joint presentation between a, a person here from the university that is, he's a real maker. I, I don't know, I am passionate about making, but I am not what we're going to see uh, the definition of a maker. Maybe I, I make events, but I am not really, I'm not making anything. I just like to have spaces for making. His name is Graham and Paul. So he was going to present a little bit on making. There's going to be a video that we're going to actually later we're going to post on, online for you to see his perspective of the making movement. But I think what is interesting is to start seeing how this is, ha what is happening here and, and what is happening? I think many, many sites are actually converging or helping all the things that we're seeing and actually a lot of things that are happening here at Tech Tuesday are related to the maker movement. But I think there's some differences but in a way it has to do with technology. So we see MakerBot and I, I, don't, I know MakerBot now is, was bought by another company but MakerBot had to, to do a lot with the maker movement. Obviously Maker Fair Tech Shop. Tech Shop actually began in San Jose, California and it's a, what is called a maker space. There's all, all the places that are happening in maker spaces and I know uh, those are in interesting things and important things. Also Kickstarter, crowdfunding. So we see all these technologies that are helping accelerate making. Making is, there's, there's nothing new about making. I think what is new is, is technology is allowing us or helping us to move faster, to connect, to collaborate. And actually that's why I think this, this environment is excellent to start promoting and, and letting people know what are we making. Oops, I don't know exactly how this is. Hmm? Oh, it's the other one, no? Okay. So let me just tell you a little bit. So I, I started learning about the maker movement. I, I saw a, a TED video. Uh, it was an excellent. And I learned about this individual. He's, he's, he's called Rick Carter. He's a, I think it's a great example of what, it, what is a maker or what is happening at the maker movement. He, he's from Houston. And he has a project. And, and he called it a project called the Sashimi Tabernacular Core. Um, he's a physicist and he he's making this vehicle for fun and he presents in all the maker first actually in, in most of the big fairs he goes and presents he doesn't charge he doesn't make any money and that's one of the differences with many science technology or inventors most of the makers at the beginning at least they are doing this just for fun just as a hobby so he has this vehicle it's called the sashimi he has more than 150 or i think 200 uh, it's called uh, the valley bass. Valley. It's a fish that it moves and it, it, it shows. I will show you a video in a minute. But one of the interesting things that I, I follow him after seeing that video, and he, he did a post on Facebook. One of these fish, well, some of the fishes actually start breaking apart. There are all fishes that they used to be sold like maybe 10 years ago for like for just for a house item. So he put all like 250 of those in his vehicle and they start breaking. So some of the pieces start actually breaking. So he did a post on Facebook asking his followers, whoever had a 3D printer, to print the piece. And this is where we start seeing the connections with all these environments that are in a way connected. They are, this is uh, it's a maker that is asking using 3D printing technology. At that point, actually, I talked to him he didn't have a 3D printer, but also he posted his his piece. This is the piece on Tinky, uh, Tinkyverse. Tinkyverse is a is a site for that is actually hosted by MakerBot, where people can post uh, images, 3D images, for free. So he was asking his followers to 3D print some images for him to be sent to his project. So let me just show you a little bit, actually, and I am, I am a, a fan of, of this specific. Where is my, oops. No, that's me. So you 
you can see a little bit what is the sashimi. That specific project is very important for the maker community. And it shows how we, we actually start using different technologies and YouTube and all those things that are, I think, that, that we know but are important for the maker community. So other, other sites that are connected to, to the, the movement, there's you know, a lot of things that are like Thinkiverse, uh, obviously YouTube, there's many many actually websites i think that linda was here uh, I don't, maybe some presentations ago and she i don't know i love the story of that actually she learned how to code through youtube so there's a lot of things that we can learn and that's why we are i think accelerating this type type of movements because of all this technology and how the technology helps so so makers are of all kinds it's not only technology and that's what I, one of the things that i really like and i will show you some examples of ma local makers that i think are, are amazing but that is something that is important. It's not only technology. Obviously, there's a lot of technology, you know, quadcopters and, and 3D printers, programming, apps. But you will see also crafts, uh, different types of things. So the movement began in San Mateo, San Mateo, California in 2006. So it's a pretty young movement. It's, it's, <coughs> it's a company. So now, in 2013, they are celebrating that they were able to have to host a hundred first around, around, well, around the world, really. So those are actually, you can see, I see the map where, uh, where they are, have hosted first. So they're going international. Obviously, the movement began in, in the United States and it's very strong. Maker Fair had two different types. Uh, if you're familiar with the concept of TED and TED at, uh, also Maker Fair has Maker First. Those are the big first that are organized by them. They have one in Detroit, one in Kansas City, one in New York. They have one, the one in San Mateo, that's the original one. And they have one in the UK. And I believe they did one in, 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 in Asia. And they also give permits for indivi individuals to do a, a fair, in, you know, an independent uh, maker fair. It's, they call those mini maker fairs. So we have actually, and we'll talk a little bit about later, the one that, that well, I, I have been doing yeah, I did last year is the Macaulay Mini Maker Fair. We did it last year. And the location is in San Mateo. And it's just, they have more than 700 makers presenting. And it's an incredible experience. It's a, well, the way I see it is like a Disneyland for adults. And also kids enjoy. It, it, it really is an incredible experience. It's super big. They have fire. Well, let me just. One of the experiences that I actually had, and I will show you some of the things that they have. Maker Fair, they show you how to make a Maker Fair. So one of the processes that they actually do, in order for you to have an independent Maker Fair, you need to attend a Maker Fair. It could be a mini or, or, the, or the big fair. So I was able actually to attend two. I went to the one in Austin, and I really recommend you, if you have an opportunity, to attend to several, because every, every fair is going to be very different. And also was able to attend to the one in San Mateo um, in 2012. So part of the things that they ask, well, they, they, call, they call us Maker Corps. People are helping Maker Fair. So most, some of the things that you see is a lot of fire. People actually do, and they do this for fun. Those are exhibitions that they have in Maker Fair. There was a lot of what is called deconstruction. You know, a big farm of computers and printers and, and kids actually were deconstructed, just turning them apart. So there was a lot of, you know, a, a lot of hands-on experiences. Uh, in that case, I was Kuehler Parker actually doing presentations on how to do prototypes. So they have all these labs there, people actually showing. But it was always this show and tell, this do-it-yourself kind of thing. There's a lot of Legos also. And a lot of technology. This is my famous, actually, uh, well, it's something very proud. I actually was able to, 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 to talk to the, he's the founder, Dale, he's the founder of Maker Fair. 
and because I was helping the event, I was able to actually to talk to him. But you can see the excitement and the sharing and the collaboration of this type of movement. So the Mini Maker Fair, we did it last year. We got more than 50 actually uh, presenters, uh, and we have more than 800 attendees. Obviously, this year, I'm, I'm hopefully we get, get some makers here that are excited about presenting and share what, what they are doing. W the nearest one we have is actually in Austin. We have one in, in there's Houston, Dallas, uh, but the nearest one we have is in Austin. It's a big effort, actually, to bring this type of event here. And hopefully, by combining our, our um, resources and collaborating, we can do a better event. We are always looking for this wow factor, things that are interesting, things that are different. That's really what you are looking for. So some of the things we actually did last year, we got more than 50 kids uh, to play and collaborate and co-create uh, using a game called Minecraft. I don't know if someone has played or know what is Minecraft. Yeah, Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. If you're a gamer, just raise your hand. <laughs> well, I was able to get 50 kids to collaborate and co-create a project called the McAllen Minecraft Village. So they did it there on site. They were actually working on a server, but all the kids were actually working together. It always this collaboration, and they were sharing what they were doing. Also, Maker Fair, you want to bring different ways of making and creating. So we have a club, a knitting club here in the valley. Uh, they meet every Thursday. So they went and they presented knitting. So there was a knitting club doing, and you can actually knit with them. Need along, it was actually the project. We have this 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 kid that actually does pens, and he works. And he was actually that was a photo ad fair. He was doing and showing and sharing what materials he was using, what he was doing, uh, and he does uses different types of, of wood, like granjeno. I wasn't even you know, I, I, at that point. I never, I wasn't, I didn't knew what was granjeno. It's, it's supposed to be a wood. So he told me he was explaining all these things there at the fair. We have music, people are making music, so, so you, you start getting excited. Uh, so the, the Make Fair is actually happening Saturday, June 21st. Uh, the process, basically, if you want to present something, is go online and do a little registration. Actually, that registration is important because it's connected to the Big Fair. All the information is shared with them because they are also trying to make sure that the movement is growing. And I think my time and my presentation is over. So. If you have some, you know, questions, comments, uh, who has been in a Maker Fair? No one? Who has been? Well, I know there's some people that went to the Maker Fair, but who has been in a Maker Fair that wasn't the one in McAllen? Yeah, so we have Maker Fair in the Valley. Maker Fair in the Valley. Maker Fair in the Valley. Yeah, it's the same location we did it last year over there, and and. It's going to be, we are, it's, we are going to have, we are, I think you better, yeah. I hope not. <laughs> no, it's there. It's actually, well, the, the old library now is, is the McAllen Creative Incubator. Oh, maybe you're talking about the old, yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. Well, actually, he's a real passionate about making, so he helped me a lot. One of the things that we like to do is bring different projects. So maybe you or maybe someone from the audience know of a great project that is happening. Tell us or tell Graham, because that's really what we need. We need great projects to show people that want to share that. You need to be excited about sharing. It's not about just presenting a product. It's different. You know, there's expos where you can actually present a product and maybe sell your product. This is about sharing and collaborating and telling your story. So that's, uh, he was instrumental, actually, in, in the success of Make It Fair last year. Questions, comments? No? I don't know. I, normally they do it before the, the one, the Big Fair. So I think it's, going, it's happening around maybe May. And it's a great trip, I think. And, and if someone is going, you should, you should have the experience of being part of the, of the event, helping. I I have been well I have been in in Gigdom for example I don't know who have been in Gigdom but yeah and I love those spaces but uh, I wasn't really talking too much about it but I I am also I'm 
trying to get one something like this here, but sometimes it's, you need to go little by little. But I think it's a great, great resources, and hopefully we can actually everything is connected. I think right now. Nope. But if you actually if you if you help, it's free. <laughs> You volunteer, and actually, I, I I think it's a great way to to really get the 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 atmosphere. You wanted to. The. Maybe it could be. It's only one day. I think it's only one day. Mm -hmm. No, actually, what I'm going to do this year, and this is. Secret, I guess. No, it's not secret. <laughs> but it's in the process. Uh, I, I'm waiting a little bit. But what I'm going to do this year, and there's, other, there's many exhibitions. The Minecraft was my exhibition. Really, I just wanted to do it, and I just did it. So maybe I'm a maker. Well, actually, I get people to make things. What I'm going to do is cardboard. Uh, I don't know if, if, if whoever is familiar with the cardboard uh, Kane's Arcade, the story of the kid that did, you know? Who is familiar with Kane's Arcade? That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> if you are not familiar with Kane's Arcade, you should. <laughs> I think it's a great story of a kid in, in LA that just had a, like a chalky cheese of cardboard. And he had everything. I think I'm running out of time, sure. <laughs> but uh, he, he got one person excited. And, and that's where actually we start seeing how technology is helping. He got one person excited about the project. That person was the right person. And he spread the word. And then you have a movement about cardboard. Actually, there's something called the Global Cardboard Challenge that happens, I think it's the first Sunday of October or the September. It's October something. Um, it is an exhibition of cardboard. So I want to do a little exhibition of cardboard. That's going to be what I am doing to the, for the fair. Obviously, I'm doing also the fair. But uh, and we'll have more more exhibitions there. But it's a great, actually, the, the King's Arcade is something actually worth seeing, I think. It's inspiration. Questions, comments? Yeah, it's a good it's a good exhibition, and those are normally you have small fairs. Uh, obviously, the one in 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 San Mateo is just humongous. It's super big. They have more than a hundred attendees per year, so that's yes, incredible. That's questions. Nope. I think I. Did my job.